Guys, you see what that says right there, right? McFarlane Toys. You see what that is right there? That is the Frost King. That's right, we're doing the Frost King wave today, guys. I've got all four figures. It's time to see what we got here. It's time for Outside the Box. What's going on, comrades? It's your Supreme Leader, Cold Bane, a.k.a. Agron, and today for Outside the Box, we've got four figures from the Frost King wave. We've got ourselves, and they're all out of order. Huh, I was going to put them in order, and we've got ourselves Wonder Woman. We've got Batman. We've got ourselves... Green Lantern, John Stewart, which is, this is my first John Stewart Green Lantern, so I'm super excited about that, guys. Really am. He's one of my, he, it's one of my, uh, one of my favorites to talk with people about. All right, and finally, finally, we have Black Adam. So I'm excited because we got the four figures here. I, I've been dying to get this wave, and I've seen it in Walmart uh, sitting there for a little bit, and it. I mean, it went quickly with my Walmart. Like, by the time I had enough money to go get it, gone. But the good news is I went through McFarlane Toys. Had to wait a little longer for it to ship, but the good news is it's here, and it cost me 20 It cost me, like, 20 bucks less to get it from there than it did from Walmart. So I'm super excited about that. Let's get everything in order here. We're going to start off by opening Diana Prince herself, Miss Wonder Woman. And this is from the Justice League Endless Winter Wave as well. That's, that's the official name for it. This is the win Endless Winter Wave. And it is a Justice League Wave. There were four in the Build-A-Fig series. I'm excited for... Uh, I, and I saw it the other day in Target. My first experience seeing it in Target. But the Starro Build-A-Figure Wave looks really good so far. That Superman looks really crisp. I'm uh, debating about picking that up. But right off the rip, we've got ourselves an amazing Wonder Woman figure. Uh, they have begun securing their stuff in a little bit better. There's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot of rubber bands on this, so I'm gonna need my handy dandy nippers here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the back part of the band off, so that way we can just free him carefully. So. I'm going to go ahead and free Wonder Woman as well. I can go ahead and cut from the front here with that. Because there's a clear spot to cut. Being that I'm a Gunpla builder, these nippers come in handy for so many things other than just Gunpla. Alright. So, guys, that was the cleanest pull from a box. Literally, the box is molded around her versus being molded poorly. Um, she does come with a sword. That is the only accessory you're going to get with her. I'm pulling everything out of the box, including the art card and the stand. I want to see if they've updated the stands any. I doubt it. I honestly doubt that they have. I think it's going to say DC on it like everything else. Or McFarlane Toys. So, let me get the, let me get the back out of it. No, let me get the card out. And they've separated it again, which is interesting because for a while there, they were using one big piece of plastic to uh, hold the card and the back end, but now it's two pieces of plastic. And I can't get the backing out, which is, well, that's a bonus for me, because I like I try to like, I like to try to keep the boxes together the best I can. But again, just a basic DC puck. It's nothing, there's no fanciness there, like there are with like, like I was hoping there would be, you know, like you would see like Mortal Kombat has like the Mortal Kombat one now instead of having like the character's uh, logo. Here is the art card here. And I'm going to bring that where my ring light hopefully won't wash it out too bad. Um, it's a really nice art card. Real name, Diana Prince. Diana is the daughter of Hippolyta, queen of the uh, immortal Amazon warriors, and Zeus, the mighty Olympian god. Diana grew up isolated on the paradise island of the Missyra? I, I've heard it said a thousand times and I can't think of it. I can't say it. 
until pilot Steve Trevor crashed there and revealed the outside world to her. Soon she traveled to the world where she became a champion for justice and equality as Wonder Woman. The Amazon princess possesses the godlike strength, possesses godlike strength, speed, and the ability to fly. She is also a skilled warrior wearing bullet deflecting bracelets and wielding the lasso of truth to stop criminals in their tracks and compel them to tell the truth. So there's the back of the art card there. That's what I was just reading. Oh, that is crisp on that camera. I like that. Really a beautiful piece of art here. Let's look at the figure. Let's look at this uh, Wonder Woman. Low-key, Wonder Woman's one of my... Uh, I, I, I won't even say low-key. Legit, Wonder Woman's one of my favorites. She comes with a sheath. We've got her with a fur-lined cape. Because this is part of the Endless Winter Saga. Um, I love the armor. I love the suit. I love that it's a more concealing suit. Because, you know, Wonder Woman's usually, like, super revealed. The cape does feel like it can kind of come off, maybe. Um, maybe not. Maybe it's just the way it's posing. Po joint posability. She's got really good arm joints there. I like that. I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit so y'all can see me messing with this. Uh, knee joint is... Really good knee joint. I love that. That feels like that's a... Yeah, there's a multiple click system in that. I like that. Of course, we've got the ankle joint there. No McFarlane toe joint. Wait, no, it's there. It's there. It's concealed so well. Like, I'll fold that back up so you can see. You almost can't see it. That's really good. That's a really good design. Um, You got her lasso here. That does not come off. Or, and I wish they would have given us one that was, like, in the posing. Or, like, in, the, in a playability, uh, playable way. She does have her ponytail, which you can pose either in front of her, like so, or behind her, to kind of give it like it's leaning over the cape cloak. Um, it's really not too posable, but it's posable enough to where you can put it in those two positions. Uh, Joint-wise, the cloak does interfere with her left arm here. The left arm is really kind of inhibited. She can do a decent kick out or spread out uh, pose. Not a bad figure. Really not a bad figure. And guys, not a tiny figure either. I mean, she's really big. Big. She comes with this sword, which is a really cool sword. Now, as you can see, it's that soft plastic, so you have to kind of bend it back in place. But it goes into the sheath pretty well. She can hold it. Um, I just have a hard time getting parts in the hands here. So I'm going to try that real quick. Let's see if I can get her thumb to give. Again, her hand's really tiny and really tight, so, like, you got to bend those fingers. Luckily, they're bendable. So, there she is holding the sword there. Really a great grip on the sword, too. You can shake her violently, and that's not moving anywhere. And, again, once you bend, once you bend those fingers out, you can always ball the fist back up. Like, that, I love the... I love the kind of plastic they use on these fingers here. I just wish they wouldn't use it on the sword. Because, I mean, that to me, that kind of ruins the... Now the sword won't go in. The sword goes into the sheath. But it's like, as you can see there, the sheath's on kind of a... It's got kind of a hollowed out point here where you can kind of see the sword a little bit. Um, I don't know if that... Let me look at... Huh. Okay. Well, that's not too accurate. In the card, they actually have it like the sheath is fully sealed there. Here, it's split. So, um, it's not a big issue for me, um, quality control-wise. I, I don't find that to be an issue. Head turn. Let's look at that head turn real quick. She's got a really good head turn. Um, can't really look up too much. Can't look down too much. But can turn left and right. And now we look at our first part of the uh, Frost King Build-A-Fig. We have the torso here, and this is a really well sculpted torso. I'm gonna bring that a little closer. There we go. You can see it right there. That's a really well sculpted. I love this belt buckle here. That's really good. Uh, excited to see how this is gonna turn out because it looks like a really neat figure. So next up, we have the man who is a bat, Batman, and. Right off the rip, the packaging looks crisp. I love this. Um, 
you know, unlike Marvel or Star Wars, we get just like a blank canvas here. Uh, I would like a little artwork there, you know. If I'm paying 20 something dollars for a figure, throw a little art on the box. The back of the box has the art card for the Frost King, uh, and, and it's embossed. It's actually really well done. It's a, It's got a nice little pushed out kind of almost like gel paint kind of deal going on there. I like that. I like that a lot. So let's get this out of the box here. And we're going to secure our knife again. Batman comes with some interesting items here, but there is there's one thing here for the Frost King I see added in. Now, can I break free? I don't know why I'm taking the stand out, because really that's not... It's There's nothing different about it. I'm going to take the card out, though. I do like these cards. There. We'll leave the stand in there, because that stand's just a basic disc stand. Here is his card, guys. I'll bring that a little closer so you can see. Get away from the ring light there. I'll well, try to. It's a really good art card. Let's look at the back of it real quick. Well, try to. There we go. And it, it just gives you kind of his backstory there. Um, you know, tell, it's the, it's basically the same story that's on every Batman card I've gotten so far. It's, there's nothing different here about this one. And, uh, yeah, it's it, there's nothing really major changed about that. All right, let's break him free from his plastic prison here. We'll go from the back here just because those gaunt well those gauntlet spikes aren't in the way there, so I can cut that free. Let's cut his waist free. He's got two on the ankle there. The sword act this big frost sword actually has two rubbers uh, rubber holders as well. Let's get those out real quick. Let's get these big old hulking arms out of for the frost king way. Oh wow. Those actually did break pre uh, pre removal. That's crazy. Okay, and there's one there. So where is the? Okay, there's the second band. There. Arms are free. Let's get these ankles free, and then we'll be able to look at this figure in detail. Amazingly, the Batman figure used nothing but... There was no tape in this. But they used nothing but um, rubber ties for the joints and for the, for the accessories. It's really crazy. But right off the rip, let's look at our Batman here. Now, as you can see, this is a very winter-prepared Batman. No pun intended. Uh, he comes with... This accessory right here, this batarang, I guess that's a batarang. It might be more of a like a bat seeker that he can hold in his hand. I say that. Let's see if we can actually get him to hold it in his hand. He cannot hold it in his hand. Then why does he have it? I think he can hold it in his hand, but you got to get it in like the right in a sweet spot there. Let's see. I'll try to see if I can do that. There we go. So here it is right here. He's whole, he, You can pose him with it. You can place his hand down. Uh, that It's not a batarang. Um, that is definitely like a... like Almost like a, dev, a bat device of some kind. I can't tell. But really, it's, this is a cool figure. The, go, the goggles are in, in place permanently. You cannot move those goggles. Joint-wise, he's got some good joint movement there. Uh, this cloak is permanently wrapped around him. But we can look at his armor a little bit there. You can actually look through and see it a little bit. He's got a good uh, split movement there. Uh, knee joints are pretty much going to stay in place. You're not going to be able to move them too much just because this cloak is... You can kind of pose his legs like that right there. He's got good ankle joints. Um, wearing some pretty heavy armor here too. Just drop that device. But again... It doesn't stay in his hands too well. That's the only downfall I have with this. Other than that, this is looking solid. Sculpt-wise, I'm loving the art. I'm loving the art style here. There's it's armor. He's wearing bat armor versus wearing like a traditional Batman uniform there. He's got those nice gauntlets on. It's it's looking very medieval. Um 
really something cool for me. I, I love the medieval look on Batman. In fact, there was a time where I, th I think there was a medieval Batman uh, storyline where his ancestor was a, or where it was like a medieval era or a medieval timeline. And that, I think I actually have that wave ordered, so that would be really cool. But yeah, that's the Batman, guys. I love the sculpt on this and the design of the of the uh, cloak here, the uh, the jacket looks really crisp. Head sculpt looks nice too. I love the fact that he's got like on this like completely covering cowl with a uh, mask. Now, cool item here for me is this freaking sword. Look at the size of this sword, guys. It is the size, almost the size of Wonder Woman herself. We get this sword, and it's that it's that kind of soft plastic, so it will bend a little bit. You may need to kind of like press it down a little bit just to get it back in shape. But we get two massive arms here with giant shoulder pauldrons. Let's get those put on real quick. And... Those spikes really do a number on my hands every time. They're just so, so sharp. Alright, to get it in place, it's almost... I wish you could take that pauldron off to get it in place. Let me see if I do it like... No, I can't do it like that. I was going to try to like... It, it's a hard one to get in place just because of the spikes there. Oh, come on. And it rotates so bad. It's so, it's so pose, it's so like loose. God, that does not go in. Okay, that one's a little bit tighter. Let's see if I can get that in. If it wasn't such a... I almost, almost need to wear, like, thick gloves just to put this on just because the parts are so freaking sharp. Like, I don't know where to push on this to really get a good connection. There, that, that one's in. Alright, so I got the first arm in. Let's try this other arm again. This one, again, was kind of loose for me. God, that just hurts. And I know it's meant to be a little sharp there because it's the art style. But God, you cannot get this arm to go in place. Let's see if I can get a good... Oh, come on. Yeah, see, that's, that's the problem here. This joint here is so loose compared to that other one. Like when I think I've got it in, it moves. I'm trying to get it to go in. That's such a weird peg design too. Like I don't I don't like that design. I mean look at my hand right now, guys. That's just from trying to push this in place. Alright, let me move his arm out. So that way I'm not pushing on that other hand there. Because he's got these spikes. Oh good, we can take that, we can actually get the spikes off. Or we can push them back. To reach in there and get that arm in place. Hopefully I didn't just break it. It's just being so difficult. God. It is, it is super difficult to get that arm in place, guys. I mean, it's just a tiny ball and peg there. But for some odd reason, I can't get the angle on it. Okay. I'm, I'm going to try to get it in there and I'll be right back. Ice coming off the shoulder. Why did my monitor? Sugar. Some sort of fur. Your cape looks very good. Okay. 
And in three, two, one. All right. Got the arms in place. This one's a little loose. Um, the peg joint in that is not. It it you have to work it a lot just to get it in place. Um, I may have actually warped his shoulder armor a little bit pushing on it. Tore up my hands doing this too. I mean, they got eat up by that. Uh, McFarland, please check your products before you start. Like, I don't know. Maybe it was just me. Maybe it's just the one I've got. But that ball joint, I had to literally fight three times just to get it to go in, and it wouldn't go in properly. All right, next up, we've got the John Stewart Green Lantern. Now he comes with a couple of accessories: the head and the cloak here for Frost King. I struggled hard with that arm, guys, and I'm tired now. I hope the legs don't give me any problems like the Bane build a fig. I've heard rumors, seen some videos. People have said that said the same thing that it has that Bane build a fig kind of feeling to it. No, that arm peg. I get they're making him a big character because he is a big character. They're making a big figure because he is a big character, but. You know, a little quality control goes a long way, McFarlane. I, I mean, I love your figures. Don't get me wrong. I'd rather collect McFarlane than anything else. I'm mostly McFarlane in Black Series, I've noticed. Uh, very few Marvel Legends. Like, if it's a Marvel Legend, I, Mar if it's a Marvel Legend series I see I want, I may try to pick it up, but not really. I, I haven't been a huge fan of the Marvel Legends stuff. All right. So I'm getting the Green Lantern out, and again, they've used a lot of those little rubber bands. Okay, that's free. Let's cut this other leg free. There we go. Let's cut his arms free. Like I said, he's got a lot of rubber bands and spots here. But I think I've got them all cut out and free. Yeah, there he is. Let's get that head out. Okay, the head's actually strapped in with a rubber band. And we've got our next parts for the Frost King already pulled out as well. So we've got everything pulled out of the out of the plastic here. We've got the John Stewart Green Lantern here. Really a solid figure. Really one of my favorite Green Green Lanterns to look at too. It's I've got some other Green Lantern figures, and this one just really feels appropriate for what we're dealing with here, you know, with the Frost King. Um, just really a solid figure. Let's bring him up closer there so you can take a look at him. Gotta remember to kind of cover. There we go. So as you can see there, really well carved out, really well designed. Joint wise, it's very solid. I don't see too many issues. He's got a double torso joint, which is cool. He can do a basic split. The joints are a little loose on him, but he's got really good poseability there. I'm looking at the arms. That one's stiff. That's a that's about the only stiff joint there. But you can pose him in multiple different ways here. Again, McFarland toe joint bends all the way up. I almost thought he had a double toe joint there, but. And I love how they seal that toe joint so you can't really see it too well. I mean, you can see it, but it's not like, oh my god, a toe joint. He comes with a couple of swords here. Um, these are like the Green Lantern Energy Swords. And I love, the, I love like I said, that medieval, almost like, piratey feel to him. Let's get one in his hand real quick. I'm going to put one in his hand just because I'm not going to... My hands are tired from struggling with that arm joint. And will he take it? He is not. His hand is a little stiff. Again, probably need to put him in a little bit of boiling water just to get that plastic loose. Alright. Well, I was going to pose him with it, but I'll just hold it in his hand real quick. As you can see here, not a bad looking sword. Really, and I dropped it. And it went in the box. Nice. It actually went in his box. So, nice catch. But, yeah, that's the Hal Jordan figure, guys. I love these little swords here. They're really well detailed. I love the design of it. Let's look at his Let's look at his art card, because I didn't show that off. Uh, John Stewart, not Hal Jordan. John Stewart. I'm so used to saying Hal Jordan, because I have a Hal Jordan figure. But the John Stewart uh, Green Lantern here. Uh, real name, of course, John Stewart. John Stewart is a former U.S. Marine who used his military training and discipline to protect Earth and the rest of the space sector 
2814 as a member of the intergalactic peacekeeping force known as the Green Lantern Corps. As Green Lantern, John wields a power ring which creates a protective shield around him, allows him to fly. <coughs> hmm. That was a little weird feeling. And uh, generates hard light energy con constructs in the form of anything he imagines. Fueled by willpower, Green Lantern's power ring is one of the mightiest weapons in the universe. So, see if that focuses. There it goes. I like that. Really good art detail on it. Um, his card doesn't look like the figure. And that's a little interesting for me because the other two were actually like pictures of the figure. This is an actual like comic scene there. Let's see if I can get it. Up. It doesn't. My camera hates. It's it's got a weird focus point. But anyway, for this part of the figure now we have we have the privilege of putting on the cloak, which actually just slot, which actually just pops right into the back here. And I might put that on last just because there's a whole lot of pressing I'm going to have to do here. And it comes with the head. Which the head just went on super... No, it didn't. Again, these tinier joints here, these tiny little ball joints, don't work well with a figure. There. Okay, that, that shouldn't go anywhere. But there's the head, guys. Let's bring him a little closer. I love the details in the eyes. I love the teeth. Really looking good. Really shaping up well right now. So hopefully, I'm put that. Like I said, I'll put that cloak on once we get them legs in place. So again, guys, the John Stewart Green Lantern. This is a great figure from this piece. Uh, really, really well done. Oh, his toe got curled all the way up. Well. Wow. All right, so last up, we have Black Adam. Now, I'm excited for the Black Adam movie. I know The Rock is playing Black Adam, so that should be interesting to see. Uh, I, I, I really... I'm hoping we get a good Dr. Fate movie, too, because I like Dr. Fate. I really got more into these characters as I played in Justice as well. So, like, I, I didn't get a whole lot of comic book reading done as a kid, but... Uh, watching like some of the DC movies that have come out and really kind of diving into the video games as well like uh, Injustice helped me kind of open my eyes to the really cool characters that are there like you know John Stewart's Green Lantern versus Hal Jordan but I, I really do love the designs here so finally we have Black Adam Here's his art card. I'll show that off first this time. I usually show that off first. I don't know why I skipped. I was so excited about that Green Lantern figure. His real name is Teth Adam. Centuries ago, the same wizard that granted Billy Batson the powers of Shazam bestowed mystical powers upon a pure of heart youth in ancient Egypt. But when the boy tried to share his power to save his dying uncle, his uncle stole it and became the legendary supervillain known as Black Adam. Black Adam has the same magical abilities as his superhero nemesis Shazam. But Adam's powers come from the Egyptian gods. Shu grants him stamina, Heru speed, Amon strength, Ze Zahuti wisdom, Atan power, and Mehen courage. Black Adam can also fly and is virtually invincible. So here's the art card. Here's the back of the card there. Y'all can pause if you want to read. Any, anytime you want to read these things, I will set these up so you can read them. Uh, just pause so you can read. There it is right there. That's a... It, again, it's the figure. So, I mean, we're getting more views of the figure and less of, like, a comic book. But still, for some odd reason, we got a comic book scene for the Green Lantern figure. Alright. He comes... We got a couple of effects here. Now, I don't know... I think these are Black Adam's effects. I'm trying to free him from his plastic prison here. I have yet to see the Shazam movie, and I want to see it. I think I've freed him now. Let's see. Oh, wow, he's got an arm restraint over here that I didn't get. There we go. 
Okay, we are completely free. Just cut his uh, effects out. He comes with these two lightning effects, which are really cool. Um, oh, one of them just fell on the floor. Let me see if I can get this one. There we go. I'm dropping everything today, guys. I'm just dropping everything. All right, so let's get him here. Let's get him out here. Let's look at his uh his effects. Good news is you can kind of take it and wrap it around his wrist here, and it gives you that effect there. Let's take that effect off though, so you can see the figure in its full detail without the effects. Um, really good shadow uh, shading around the eye there. Let me do this. There we go. You can kind of see the shading around the eye there. Really a great sculpt. Figure-wise, he's got some very good posability here. You know, you can do the Peacemaker dance. There we go. There's the Peacemaker dance. He's got super posable knee there. That's like one, two, two-joint knee. Um... Toe joint, as always, a McFarlane thing that you're going to see almost every McFarlane figure. Back sculpt looks good. You can get a little cheek there. It's just a really good figure. I really wish we could get a light up effect here in that chest. It's uh, painted. I'm trying to get it so you can see it, but again, the white balance is so... There we go. You can see it there. Got a really well detailed uh, kind of changing hue there all right he comes with these two effects here and I'll show the effect I showed the effect on his wrist but you get this like lightning effect that comes out of his wrists there really cool really really good all right let's go ahead and get his legs free here let's go ahead and get the Frost King's legs free hopefully I can cut through all of this without any issue there we go now, I've seen another review of this wave, and the guy who reviewed it said that the legs give him very Bane Build-A-Fig wave vibes. It scares me a little. Alright, so here's his left leg. And he said once he would get one in place, the other would pop out. That went in. That felt like it went in, so comfortable with that as long as it did okay that's in I found that also moving the skirting as well can kind of help okay that right leg is a little loose oh god that arm came out luckily that's the good arm Okay, both legs are kind of in now. God, that is a massive figure. I like that. I really like that. The only problem I had really getting together was this arm right here. Um, I don't even know if it's fully in. I'm not even going to try to pose him superly to make sure. Uh, just because there's a lot of... I mean, it feels like it's in. His head also kind of gave me a little bit of a hard time there. Leg-wise... I don't want to move his legs too much just because they do feel like they're a little they're not the, the joints not fully secured turn his head a little bit so I can push on them to make sure they're in they look like they're in I don't see any gap that would tell me they're not um they're kind of a weird leg joint anyway but super massive let's get his cape on so we can look at him fully fully uh together All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get him a sword in his arm in his hand as well. He's got some massive fingies there too. Massive fingers, just really huge. I was gonna try to put the sword in his hand, but I, there we go. You just got to kind of wedge it between the thumb and the. But here he is, fully fully installed, guys. I'm gonna bring him all the way back because if I bring him close to the camera, he's not gonna fit on the camera. Just a really huge figure, guys. Really well detailed, too. I love this, like, fur on the cloak here. I love the design of him. 
However, flaws I found, this arm right here is going to be a pain to put on. Um, if you've got the bad joint like I got. Mine had just like a weird, the ball joint needed to be carved out a little bit. Um, I got it carved out and it seems to be holding it just fine now. But yeah, let me know what you thought of this wave. Let me know if you've bought these figures. Um, let me know if you've had any other problems, because I didn't have problems with the legs. Like I said, the legs never gave me much of a problem. Instead, it was more of a... I don't... I don't... It was more of an arm issue. Um, the head also was super loose whenever I tried to get it on, but now it seems like it's kind of in place, which is good. Um, I love the details of this figure. This is a really well-sculpted figure. But yeah... Anyway, comrades, that's it for today's video. I want to thank y'all so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Y'all can follow me on all of my social medias. There is a link tree in the description below. Uh, check out those links where you can uh, check out my social medias as well as my merch shop. Snag you some KBG merch to help support the channel. But uh, anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. Oh, leave a comment below. Oh, yeah, leave a comment below. Sorry, I'm, that, that thing wore me out. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you if you've gotten any of these figures. Let me know which one's your favorite. If you hadn't gotten them, let me know if this Frost King is as amazing as I think it is. Because it's amazing looking. I love the detail of it. Really one of my favorite, uh, really one of my favorite figures now in my collection. But anyway, comrades, that's it for today's video. Thank y'all so much for watching. Much love. And asvidaniya.